Hello and welcome, my name is Meeplus, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And I finally read What is Obscenity? The Story of a Good-For-Nothing Artist and Her Pussy by Roku Denshinko, aka Megumi Igarashi, and translated by Anne Ishii. Published in Japan by Kinyobi Inc., this English edition was published by Koyama Press, a local Toronto publisher that ran 2007 to 2021. Content notes for very cartoony nudity, including but not exclusively cartoon vaginas everywhere, cheating, plastic surgery, and prison. What keywords came to mind? Nonfiction, prison, injustice system, misogyny, coming of age, and relationships. Starting off with the Goodreads description, I'll append some more information from the author from Wikipedia. Quote, a graphic memoir of a good-for-nothing Japanese artist who has been jailed twice for so-called acts of obscenity and the distribution of pornographic materials, yet continues to champion the art of pussy. In a society where one can be censored, pixelated, and punished, Rokuden Shinko asks what makes pussy so problematic. Rokuden Shiko, meaning good-for-nothing girl, is a Japanese artist. She is known for her series of decorated vulva molds, or dekuman, a portmanteau of decorated and manko, slang for vagina, distributing a 3D scan of her genitalia to crowdfunding supporters led to her arrest for alleged violations of Japanese obscenity laws, end quote. Mostly focused on her arrests in 2014, according to Wikipedia, quote, on 8 May 2016, the court handed down its decision. She was found not guilty of the charges related to the kayak on the grounds that the sculpture with its bright color and decoration did not immediately suggest female anatomy, in the words of the BBC report. However, she was found guilty of the charges related to the 3D data and was fined 400,000 yen, roughly 3,500 US dollars, about half what the prosecution had suggested was appropriate. If she had been found guilty, then she would have faced up to two years in jail and fines up to 2.5 million yen. End quote. An interesting mixture of fairly universal ignorance around vaginas and the more specific view at the Japanese legal system, obviously all through the lens of Igarashi's personal experience. The book does bounce around a bit between cartoon shorts, brief explainers about cultural context, and some photographs of key moments. I don't know for sure, but suspect that many of the comic shorts were not original to this collection, which is fine, but did mean that sometimes things got a bit redundant. Otherwise, this somewhat mixed media format was a nice change and reflected the nature of Igarashi's work, which is often more sculptural, and obviously the IRL nature of what is being covered. As far as representation is involved, obviously Manko, aka Vaginas, is a front and center. Also, obviously, this could very quickly devolve into women equal Manko, and vice versa. On page 9, I feel like Igarashi does try and separate herself from this essentialist view by saying, quote, I was taught from a young age that Manko was a bad word, even though Manko comes with every person designated female at birth, end quote. Did feel like a bit of an awkward way of putting it, and not 100% true all the time. The book also doesn't touch on men having Manko at all, but since I didn't notice anything more overtly exclusive, I did end up reading this as an awkward nod to more inclusivity. Your mileage may vary, and I would be very interested in hearing about other people's experiences slash interpretations. Uh, sexuality, seemingly limited by Igarashi's experiences, was largely heteronormative. As the book does focus on pushback to Manko art, I wasn't surprised that most of the people who seem to have been in opposition were men. Race is largely brushed over, although nationality does feature rather highly, as this is a very Japan-focused book. There are some nods to issues of class, as Igarashi's choices in this whole process are greatly affected by the fact that she is a poor artist. I also appreciated the thread of commentary that Igarashi gives on her struggles to actually make it as a mangaka, doing stuff for the story, and peers seeing more success than her. Less about the reality of being the owner of a Manko and more about using Manko in art. A lot of the potential avenues of exploring ability and disability were also ignored. That said, Igarashi does end up working with her cellmates to get another of their cellmates moved out of their cell because they find her mental health impossible to deal with and said cellmate ends up in solitary confinement. One step in an entire international system that hurts people do who do not present as mentally typical. 
for lack of a better term on my part. While this is in contrast to her generally more sympathetic and nuanced than not depiction of fellow prisoners, Igarashi does not reflect on this at all and thus feels like she is playing into stigmatizing stereotypes. To conclude, interesting but not a universal recommend, it certainly stands out as very unique and very ACAB. Four out of five stars for me. Bye y'all, keep reading and resist white supremacy. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.